have a thing for books. I was 10 years old, and Nathaniel was everything a crush-worthy 15-year-old should be. He had shaggy blonde hair, a lanky body, and a slightly crooked smile with dimples. He waved whenever he passed by and insisted that I call him Nate because only my mom calls me Nathaniel. <laughs> on the rare occasion my parents went out on a date night, they called Nate to babysit me. The first time he came over, we barely talked and watched TV until my bedtime. What now, he said. Well, try not to blush. My mom normally reads to me. OK, what does she read? I ran upstairs to my bedroom, jumped into my bed, and passed him my Disney story anthology. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is my favorite. OK, he nodded in my direction. He picked up the book and put it in his lap, opened the red cloth cover, and flipped until he found the story. Nate sat on the edge of my bed and kept sweeping that lock of hair behind his ear as he read. His finger followed each word as he read, slow and clunky. His voice stumbled over words he didn't recognize as his fingers hopped to the next page, following each word the way Alice followed the rabbit into the rabbit hole. Down, 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 would the fall ever come to an end? Suddenly, thump, thump, down she came upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves and the fall was over. As Nate read the last line, he brought his mingle, middle finger to his mouth, flicked his tongue against his fingertip, and planted it on the bottom of the page and flipped the page. He continued to read and my face flushed and my heart rate quickened and I felt tingly. I, I was 10 and I had no idea what this was. All I knew was that I loved it. <laughs> I waited for his fingertip to reach his mouth again in preparation for the page flip, less concerned about Alice and what she ate and more concerned about the flipping of the page. Watching Nate each time, imagining his mouth against my mouth, his fingertips reaching out to hold my hand. So Alice got up and ran off thinking what a wonderful dream it had been all on a summer, happy summer day, the end. Nate turned off my light and left the door slightly cracked so the light from the hall streamed in. I sat on the edge of my bed with the weight of the anthology in my lap. I licked my own finger and turned pages. In junior high, I hung out in the school library. I was obsessed with Encyclopedia Britannica. I licked my finger and turned the pages. Short bursts of knowledge, oranges, Ohio, orangutans, I followed with my <laughs> finger until the bell rang, signaling the end of lunch. But in high school, I had my first real crush. Ryan was a grade below me and played the piano. He came into my homeroom, the choir room, to practice his piano playing. I was enchanted by the way his hands moved across the keys. One lunch period, he was in the library. I watched him, four books open on the table in front of him. One hand moved across words on the page, the other scrawled notes in a spiral notebook. I sat the entire lunch period peeping from behind a book I was pretending to read. <laughs> Penicillin, Penguins, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I watched as he mouthed the words, licked his finger, and turned pages. I pulled out a notebook, opened it in front of me, scrawling nonsense and doodling while my left hand was in my lap, my fingers rubbing against the crotch of my jeans. For college, I moved far, far away from home and sunk into anonymity. I declared a theater major and spent my days in a classroom pretending I was anyone but myself. A wheelchair-bound drug addict, fretting grandmother, a tree. <laughs> when I wasn't swaying my branches, I spent a lot of time in the Love Library at San Diego State. It was the only remedy for my homesickness. Tens of thousands of hardcover books and plenty of places to hide with a book in your lap. No one knew who I was, so I cultivated a library Lolita persona. 
I was empowered as Lolita, <laughs> and there is no shortage of college boys willing to fuck in public. <laughs> I would lead a guy to the love library. I'd wear a skirt with nothing underneath and heels. I'd lead him to the fourth floor, which was consistently vacant, and ask him to read anything to me. Pull a book off the shelf. Pick a page. Read it out loud. <laughs> I'd stare at him, my hand moving under my skirt or above along my low-cut shirt, waiting for him to turn the page or look up from his book. In the library with all those books, I allowed myself to be seen. After college, I was the Goldilocks of fetishes. Going to public libraries wasn't quite right. Too transactional. Barnes and Noble, too pristine. Used bookstores. That's where I found what I was looking for. Books that were worn, that told stories besides the ones between the covers. I sit in my parked car across the street from Adams Avenue Bookstore, listening to the rain drum against the roof. I stare at the people going in and out of the bookstore, shaking out umbrellas, pulling their coats up over their heads, wet. Every single person unable to escape the wetness. I've sat here before, wishing I had the balls to just go in. I dart out of the car and shake off the rain before I walk in the bookstore. Adams Avenue Bookstore smells like sawdust and well-worn pages. It has big comfy chairs, books are piled onto every flat surface, and there's nowhere to hide. I saw him as soon as I walked in. Tall, shaved head, glasses. Whatever he was reading brought a smile to his face. Dimples. <laughs> I casually browsed near him, picking up books from shelves, not allowing myself to turn pages, for fear, for fear my knees would buckle under me. We made eye contact and smiled at each other. He picked up an ancient copy of Fahrenheit 451 the cover peeling away from the spine. He ran his finger over the spine, flicking the flap back and forth. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorites. I've never read it. What's your favorite part? <laughs> he flipped open the book. Let me see if I can find it. He flipped pages. Here it is, he said. He took a moment and smelled the center of the book. I love the way old books smell. Uh-huh. <laughs> he should put his face in my lap. <laughs> the moon there and the light of the moon caused by what? By the sun, of course, and what lights the sun? Its own fire, and the sun goes on day after day, burning and burning. I felt flush, first ripple of an orgasm, his voice deep, authentic, honest. The way he said burning ricocheted and hit every soft spot in my body. I wanted his hands on my body, flipping my pages. The sun burned every day, it burned time. The world rushed in in a circle and turned its axis and time was busy burning the years. He brought his finger to his mouth and looked at me. His tongue moved around the tip of his finger and slowly he moved his finger away, tugging his bottom lip to reveal a row of perfectly straight teeth. Somewhere in the saving and putting away had to begin again, and someone had to do the saving and keeping. He took his saliva moistened finger, planted it on the page, and turned it slowly. I bit my bottom lip, and men with matches. The world is full of men with matches, full of burning of all types and sizes. My eyes fluttered open. He stared at me, knowing goddamn well what had happened. <laughs> we smiled at each other. I'm pretty sure that's my favorite part, too. <laughs> <laughs>